Hey folks, Kate here with Fusion 3. Uh, we're going to do a quick video introducing you to F3 Slicer, which is a new slicer we've been working on for a while. Um, we're going to walk you through installation, first run configuration, and then the basics of using it. So let's get started. Uh, this is the first installer screen. Just click agree to the license terms, click install. All right, and that's it. So full disclosure, um, this is open source software and we wanna be very upfront about that. This is based on Prusa Slicer, which is based on Slicer 3. Um, we think those, those um, programs are great and frankly, we're just tagging along to that. Basically, we're taking Prusa Slicer and we're making it uh, easy for our users to use. So this will import the correct settings for your Fusion 3 machines right out of the box. But under the hood, it's just Prusa Slicer right now. In the future, we may make more changes, but right now, uh, that's really the only change. All right. The first time you run this, you're going to get this configuration wizard. And we're just going to click through this. You're going to be able to select your printers here. In the future, the, you will see an F400 category as well. Um, this is an alpha build, so we're not quite done with all the profiles. Unless you have a good reason to, I'd go ahead and click select all and this will select all your nozzle sizes for all the printers then click next here again you want to come down here and select this all button to make sure all your uh, material profiles are selected and then click next you can leave these checked or actually i would recommend leaving them both checked um, so this will automatically check the internet and try to download profile updates this software does allow us to push profile updates separately from updating the application, so I would really recommend you leave that enabled. This I usually leave unchecked if you want to be able to reload things more easily, I guess you can check it. Now, I have multiple slicers installed in my machine, so I'm not going to associate the files with F3 Slicer, but you can if you want. And then finally, I do recommend expert mode, and that's what I'm going to show you for the rest of this video and then click finish. All right, so that's it. The software is set up and ready for use. All right, we'll do a quick overview of the user interface first. So. Uh, visually, this is a little bit different than Reactor or a little bit different than Simplify 3D. Uh, your profiles are selected over here on the right hand side. So F3 Slicer breaks your profiles up into three different pieces. There's the printer, which is the hardware you're using. In this case, we have the Fusion 3 Edge 0.4 nozzle selected. So you have a 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 for Edge, same for the 410. And then obviously the F400 will also be in here. Then you have a print quality setting up here at the top. So this is where you select draft, fast, fine, or standard. And then finally you select your material. So we've got ABS, ASA, etc. While I'm here, real quick. So if you're coming from Reactor, you're used to the software having a separate profile for each brand of material. So for example, there's a Matter Hackers ABS profile and an Atomic Filament ABS profile. That's not the way the software is set up. We have an ABS family profile, and that's what you're going to use for every ABS that you run, unless the documentation tells you otherwise. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later in the video. So for example, uh, nylons, you'll notice I have a lot of brand specific nylon profiles in here. That's because a lot of nylons need a specific profile. So if you don't see a profile specifically for your brand, use the family profile. So for example, here's my family nylon profile. But we'll leave ABS selected. So to bring in a uh, 3D model, you can click on this button here. And we'll just bring in... Uh, that's not what I want. Okay, so you've got your, a few things now, a few different options. Uh, you have some options up here to delete, uh, delete all, arrange, copy, paste, that sort of thing. Um, 
over here you've got some other manipulations so you can move it, you can scale it, you can rotate it. Now F3 Slicer has some pretty cool rotation tools. You can either do this free rotation um, like this, or you can type in a delta rotation over here on the right, or you can use this rotate to face tool and do stuff like that, which is pretty cool. I'm going to put this back the way it was. Uh, you can cut an object into multiple parts if you need to, which is handy. Um, you can paint on supports. So this is going to need a video all, all to itself, but basically you can uh, manually define where you want or don't want supports using this tool. Similarly, you can paint on seams. You can define exactly where you want that layer change point to be. Uh, those are more advanced features. Um, I'll probably cover them in more detail in a separate video because for now I'm trying to keep this basic and keep it moving. Okay. So we brought in our part, we have set up our printer, our print quality, and then our material. The next thing we want to do is hit slice, and of course my video capture tool is in the way. All right, nothing a little window rescaling can't fix. Okay, when you're ready to um, slice the part, you click slice now. and it'll do its usual magic. And much like uh, other slicers, you're going to get a 3D preview of your toolpath in the main window here. You're also going to get some breakdowns on where your print time is going, uh, perimeters, external perimeters. This is useful if you're trying to optimize a print, like trying to cut out a bunch of print time, you can see where you can make the highest impact. Now, this particular part, you can see we've got a little bit of support material generated here. And I know from experience, that's not really necessary to have. Uh, so we're going to go from supports everywhere to none. Now you'll see one cool thing the slicer does, it's not reslicing the whole part because it knows it doesn't need to. It just needs to regenerate the final G code file. I can scroll through my file using these uh, arrows here. So that scrolls through the layers and then the this one, I believe, yeah, my horizontal scroller kind of scrolls through the whole, uh, gives you another way to look at the layer, basically. Now, if you click here, if you click this plus button, it's going to add a pause. So just be careful if you're clicking around, you're not clicking and adding pauses. See, it's added a pause there, and now I'm in a different mode. So I want to delete that. And then when you're ready to save it, you just click, uh, oh, I need to re-slice it, okay. You click export G-code and then just save it wherever you need to save it. Let's go back to the model view for a second. So you, if you right click on your, this is a list of all the models in your, in your build area. If you right click on it, you get some more options. Uh, you can, replace it, I won't read through them all, but one of the cool things you can do is if, if you see a little exclamation icon in here that, tell, that tells you it found errors with your file, you can repair them in NetFab inside the slicer, so that's really convenient to have. Alright, so that's really the basics of it. Now let's dive into the print settings. So. Like we already covered, you define your printer, your print quality standard, and then your filament over here in these dropdowns. Now if I go to these tabs in the, uh, the top left here, I can get into the detailed settings. So for instance, here are all my printer settings. You generally won't need to change these, um, so let's go to something you'll probably more likely change, and that's going to be the print quality settings. So if you want to manually adjust layer heights or shells or et cetera, et cetera, all of this stuff is in here and um, pretty well documented. It's got pretty good explainers. Um, now you'll notice, you notice how the support material entry is turned orange. That tells us there's a change and that changes. Remember back here, we turned support material off and it tracked that change through to right here where this checkbox got disabled. So this is a really handy way if you've made some changes or you're not sure and you're looking for what is different than our stock settings, you can find them because they'll be highlighted in orange. One thing I should call out here, 
our built-in profiles are manufacturer profiles, meaning you cannot ch you can change them, but you can't save those changes. So, like if I came in here and I wanted to change my first layer height to 0.4, it's going to let me. But if I go here, it's forcing me to save it as a new profile. That's intentional because this way you're always going to have a copy of what we know works in the software. And then if I click this little back arrow, it'll put the original setting back. Filament works pretty much the same way. You can go in and tweak all this stuff if you need to. Um, but much like with, Re with Reactor, our intention is to build profiles that work out of the box for 90 plus percent of prints. So generally, you shouldn't need to tweak these too much to get things to work. I do want to talk about dependencies real quick. So this is a way um, F3 Slicer controls what shows up. So if you notice, let's go back here. All of my material or my filament profiles have standard at the end. If I go to fine, discard those changes. Notice now they all have fine after the end and notice there's fewer of them. That's because my material profiles are different for those different quality presets. The way that's controlled is with dependencies in here. And so if you look at this, uh, that's not what I want. What I want is here. So you notice this material profile, ABS 0.4 fine, is only compatible with edge 0.4 fine. What this, the reason I'm bringing this up is if you create, start creating new profiles, you have to watch your dependencies, otherwise you'll find things disappear or they won't show up when you expect them to, or generally you'll be very confused. Um, this took me a while to wrap my head around and I had a lot of instances where um, I'd make a new profile and then I'd go to look for it and it would just be gone because I didn't set the dependencies correctly before I saved it. So just something to keep in mind there. One other subtlety to mention, support material. This version of F3 Slicer is based on Prusa Slicer 2.6 and one of the things they added to that is organic supports. And organic supports look super, super cool. However, we have not dialed these in yet. Please don't use them. Um, we can't guarantee they're gonna work. We would recommend you stick with the snug or grid style supports. Um, there's some pretty interesting subtleties with how organic supports are printed and in certain cases you can get in a lot of trouble because you can end up with uh, jams or too many retractions uh, and it just it need it's something we need to go through and, and tune before we you know cut everybody loose on it. One of the other little quirks in F3 Slicer is it tends to be very aggressive about not putting support material under bridges. So for example, I've turned our twisted bottle upside down and if you notice, there is no support generated inside either of these parts. We're only supporting the outside. The slicer thinks it doesn't need support because both ends of that bridge are supported by a structure. In the in some cases it's right, and actually in a surprising number of cases it's right. Um, so I have generally let it do its thing. Uh, I've been pretty impressed with what it's able to do in terms of bridges in a situation like this. Now, if you want to change this behavior, you can go into support material and there's a checkbox somewhere. Here it is, uncheck this don't support bridges checkbox. And now, if we regenerate the toolpath, we'll see it behaves more like other slicers or more like previous versions of, uh, of Prusa Slicer. So if you wanna be conservative, that's the way to do it. Um, one of the advantages of leaving it in this don't support bridges mode is it's a lot easier to remove support material. Um, because traditionally that support material inside those parts would be difficult to get out. This way you don't have to fight it. And unless you have a really tight tolerance on your bridging in terms of not tolerating any sag, life is a lot easier this way. One of the other great features 
of um, of F3 Slicer is workspaces. So you can go to File, Save Project, or Save Project As, and you can save this as a .3MF file. That will, similar to Reactor and Simplify 3D, that's going to condense your model and your settings and everything else into one file that you can open later and resume work on your project. So very helpful. These are also great for support. Uh, if you contact us with an issue with a certain print, we may ask you for a workspace file or a 3MF file or a project file, whatever you want to call it. But again, this is a great way for us to get your entire setup loaded into our slicer so we can see what you're doing. A lot of times this is preferable to a G-code file because once you generate a G-code file, I can't really go in and tweak it. But if you give me a workspace file, I can tweak things and see if I can make a change that fixes your issue. So that's a quick intro into F3 Slicer, how to use it, and some of the functionality and some of the things you may want to consider changing as you get into it. Um, we'll get more into the details in the Slicer with different videos, but um, this is, should be enough information to get you rolling and get you printing.